Mother Catherine. A native of Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee, Angela has been a member of the Lipscomb women's soccer program since she transferred in from Furman University. A steady presence on the defensive third, she has logged over 1,500 minutes of action for the Bisons with 19 starts made in 27 games played. A threat all over the pitch, Angela has taken seven shots, landing one on target against both Bellarmine and North Florida this season. She will graduate with a 3.75 GPA for her Bachelor of Science in Applied Chemistry. Coach O'Brien had this to say about Angela. It's been a true pleasure coaching Angela here at Lipscomb. I'm grateful she took a chance on Lipscomb because we ended up being the beneficiaries. Her willingness to lean into our culture this season has really impressed me and the joy that soccer brings her can be seen on her face. Her talents on the field are undeniable and she has been invaluable for the team defensively this season. She is a technical and smart player that has incredible composure under pressure. But what people may not know is that she is incredibly bright and will be pursuing medical school next year. She can often be seen reading books for pleasure and as a lifelong learner will be set up incredibly well for success in whatever path she chooses to pursue. Ladies and gentlemen, number 12, Angela Steidel. Next is Tori Wheeler, escorted by her parents Vance and Susan and her sister Rachel. From Seattle, Washington, Tori joined Lipscomb's program in 2020 after transferring in from Georgia. She has played in 36 games in her career with one career start for the Purple and Gold. Tori has recorded 998 minutes of action on the field for the Bisons and collected a goal and a pair of assists in that time. In her three seasons with the squad, she has taken 39 shots and landed 20 of them on target for a .513 shot on goal percentage. Tori will graduate with a fashion and interior design and exercise program administration in marketing. Coach O'Brien had this to say about Tori. I am thankful that Tori decided to transfer to Lipscomb from UGA. From the moment she stepped on campus, we knew Tori could bring something special to our program. Tori has shown her wide range of skills and has been willing to use them while playing in multiple attacking positions for us these past couple of years. It has been so great to see her buy into our culture here and embrace what God has for her. Tori is a gifted soccer player, but she is also a wonderful person who I have no doubt will make a positive impact on the world around her. Ladies and gentlemen, number four, Tori Wheeler. Last but not least is Ashley Wittucky, escorted by her parents, Laura and Dave. From Carmel, Indiana, Ashley joined the Lipscomb Women's Soccer Program in 2021 after she transferred in from Purdue. She has played in eight matches for the Bisons, totaling 177 minutes on the field with a career-high 66 minutes against Alabama State this season. Ashley recorded her first career goal against Alabama State to help extend the Bisons' lead to their 8-0 win. She will graduate with a 3.9 GPA for her Bachelor of Science in Biology. Coach O'Brien had this to say about Ashley. Ashley's story is another wonderful example of perseverance and dedication. She was sidelined last season with an ACL injury in a preseason match and did not get a chance to play any competitive matches. Thankfully, she has made her way back into full fitness this 2022 campaign, and we are glad to have her speed and defensive tenacity at our disposal. Whether or not she is on the field or off, Ashley has been a tremendous addition to this team, and we are thankful to her for all the amazing contributions she has made over her short time with us. Furthermore, I am thankful that Ashley decided to bless our program with her amazing dance moves and an infectious smile that lights up the room. Ladies and gentlemen, number 23, Ashley Wittucky. Fans, please give it up one more time for these eight incredible seniors and their dedication to our program.
Good evening, everybody. We're coming to you live from Nashville, Tennessee. This is the final ASUN matchup between Houston University and Jacksonville State University. The women's sides are poised to take, take the field here, and we are ready to kick off the next segment. My name is Camille Edibaba. I'll be carrying the broadcast. I'm happy to be here with all of you guys tonight. Shoot the shot. Wherever you may be. Coming in. Like I said, this is going to be the last regular season ASL conference matchup between the two sides. Both of them have a lot to play for. Coach University there looking to continue their great work this year in conference and out of conference while uh, Jacksonville State is looking to end, up, end the regular season on the right foot. Postseason contention. They're looking to host a conference They're able to pick up either a win or a draw. It still keeps them in the picture to potentially host a Mason Conference playoff game. This is a special night here on the Blue Springs campus because we have senior night. It's senior night for all of the all of the players. We are very, very honored to have their service on and off the field. They're honored with their families, um, their friends, and their loved ones. They're on the pitch just ahead of kickoff, and I'm sure this is the night we're all going to look to the future and what's ahead, but most certainly look to all their experiences they've had on this campus and, and hopefully look back on some very fond memories. This is going to be an exciting match with a lot to play for, and hopefully we see some great soccer here. As we have on your screen, we have Lipscomb going from left to right and Jackson State going from right to left, and here we go. We are underway. We have Lipscomb University in their all-black kits with the white numbers and Jacksonville State in their all-white kits and their red numbers. As we start off here, Lipscomb starts starts with some direct play into Jacksonville State's defensive third, and Jacksonville's able to Jacksonville's able to play them play them out of their territory and keep their defensive line clean. We can already hear from both sidelines. Their their uh, their fellow teammates are cheering them on. Both Jacksonville State's cheering them on. You can hear the energy, um, both Jacksonville State and Lipscomb. So it's going to be a high energy game. Here now Jacksonville State tries to keep possession as they play out of the back. They seem to be playing calm on the ball as they send one long into the flank. It's defended well by Logan McFadden. And out of bounds, it's going to be Lipscomb ball. Now as we see Lipscomb, they try to get into the attacking third, and they do. They pick up a foul, and they'll push the whole team forward as they, as they look to get on the end of their first set piece set. Looks like we're going to have Olivia Carapaza on the ball. Her, her set piece prowess is something that's paid dividends for for the Bison all season long. Her service um, and her direct play on goal is, has been something that's been a, a very, very, very helpful weapon for the Bison. Let's see what she does here. She tries to put the ball into the box and into a dangerous area. It's good service, but defended well by Jacksonville State as they try to get to break, as they try to break on the counter. Sent forward by Lipscomb, but defended well by, by Jacksonville State.
play a ball long into the center of the defense, but defended well by Jacksonville State. And here's Olivia to Emily Baylor, Emily, Emily Baylor up top, but it didn't quite come off. Excuse me, Kelly Baylor. Jacksonville State looks to step up the field as they send it long. And the first contender to win the ball for Lipscomb is able to play, play it upfield. And now Olivia looks to play it up the line. And it's cut off by Jacksonville State. Here we have Vanessa, Vanessa Mihal on the ball. She sends it out wide to her right back. And now Jacksonville State looks to move up the field. Errant pass sends the ball out of bounds. And now it'll be Lipscomb's ball. Now as Jacks, now as uh, as Lipscomb has the ball, they look to keep keep a little possession, move the ball around the back, see if they can displace the defense of Jacksonville State. Lyric has a Carapaz on the ball. She sends one forward, but defended well. And Lipscomb tries to play in behind the defense of Jacksonville State, but the the flag is up. And it's offsides. We're going to have a kick going forward for Jacksonville State, and I'm sure they'll try to push up their lines and get and get the get possession deep in Lipscomb's half. Nice long switch for Jacksonville State. Finds the outside back as she's defended very very well but still Jackson, Jacksonville State's ball. It's good play, it's good play here through the middle. There's overlap coming on this near side. She likes to go inside. Vanessa Mia has picked off and now Lipscomb State has possession. Possession back in the hands of Jacksonville State as they charge forward. And a shot on goal but Easy, easily kept by the goalkeeper of Lipscomb State. Lipscomb. Nice little flick here on the near side. Oh, and look to, look to pull. Ooh, it was a good idea to play the ball through through the middle, but the flag is up and it's offsides again. What we're gonna see is we're gonna see Kelly ba Kelly Byler just trying to come off the lines of the of Jacksonville State, try to pick up balls, through balls, um, any passes she can get to get in get in behind. She's such a prol prolific goal scorer. She's definitely a player to keep an eye on tonight. Olivia Carapaza has the ball deep in her corner, tries to play a pass and is blocked and it'll go out for a goal kick. So far in the first five minutes, been a pretty even match. Not much in it. Both teams are trying to play good football out of the back, trying to build um, and trying to take their chances, but it's been even. Lipscomb has time and space. They try to keep possession as they move up the field while Jacksonville State sets their press around the center circle. Errant pass to the middle is cleared up, cleared up by Jacksonville State and it'll be Lipscomb throw on the near side. Here you have Logan McFadden on the ball. She plays wide, and Lipscomb tries to keep possession as they move forward. Ball sent up down the line and seems to stay in bounds, um, but well defended by Jacksonville State. Nice cut on the far side. A very good ball played in a dangerous area and cleared by Jacksonville State. As Jacksonville State tries to move forward on this move, they they seem to keep good possession. They're trying to get a switch here, but they're displaced by the defense of Lipscomb. Lipscomb plays through their goalkeeper and will move up the field as they 
have they done as they've done a few times so far by keeping good possession, trying to find their outside backs. This time they elect to play into the pocket to to Byler and it doesn't quite come off. Picked off by Jacksonville State and they're going the other way. A long diagonal ball that she's tr that Olivia Carapaza tries to play to Wheeler. The second ball is picked up by Byler, and Wheeler's in. She hits, and it's a goal. But this one is going to be coming back. The flag is up, offsides. That's a very, very good play. Very, very good play. You have Olivia Carapaza. She she finds her forward deep deep in the territory of Jacksonville State. Plays over the top. Good hold up play by the forwards. Pings around a little bit, and a great finish. Unlucky for Lipscomb that it's called back. Long ball by Jacksonville State, defended very well by Kendall Wade. And the ball rolls out for Jacksonville's ball here on the near side. Once again, defended well by, by Wade, played back to the goalkeeper and sent long. Jacksonville State has possession, but turns it right back over to Lipscomb. A good turn by number four. Beautiful through ball in. Lipscomb's in on goal. Great ball, and but even better defense by Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State's able to clear their lines, but Lipscomb is very, very poised in regaining the ball. Olivia Carapoza looks to play a great ball into a dangerous area, looking for Kelly Beeler and it is defended out very, very well by Jackson State. We're gonna have the first corner of the match for Lipscomb, and as this game has settled, we've seen Lipscomb take over. They've been, they've been a little bit better in possession. They've been able to keep the ball, move up the field, and create dangerous opportunities. On the near side, we have number four, Tori Wheeler, who he'll be taking the corner kick. She sends it into a dangerous area. And it's it's a good shot. Two efforts on goal by Lipscomb. They stay with it. But aggressive defending by Jacksonville State as well. Ball sent in and over the net. That was a, a very good, very good action from, from Lipscomb. Very good tenacity to try to get on, get on the first ball off the off the set piece there, but I like the defending from Jacksonville State. They were tenacious. They followed up the second ball, and they were they were, you know, rewarded for it. Ball sent up through the middle, but aggressively attacked by Lipscomb. Now there, Jacksonville State is defending again. Olivia Carapaza picks up the ball, picks up her head, and is looking for options. She's able to find. Good ball in the pocket, but defended very well by Jacksonville State, and that's a rough challenge there. We're going to have a set piece, Lipscomb ball. Whole team's going to move forward, and I would assume that is going to get on this set piece and try to find something dangerous here. This free kick from about 25 to 30 yards out is straight on goal, and Carapoza looks to play to one of her teammates and very well defended by Jacksonville State. Carap Carapoza was looking for her teammate there and didn't didn't quite come off, but with maybe two or three more inches of height on that ball, she finds she finds her her intended target. Ball played to Kelly Byler and well defended by Jacksonville State. The tenacity of Jacksonville State's defense is something that's that's impressed me so far as this game has progressed and it's kind of settled a little bit. They've been under pressure, but dealt well with it. Ball sent forward. And again, one in the air. Good ball sent down the line by the right back of, of Jacksonville State, but just defended well by Lipscomb and shepherded out of bounds.
foul called against Lipscomb. We're going to be going the other way, Jacksonville State ball. Long ball played from about half field. Didn't seem to find its intended target. Goalkeeper of Lipscomb State just picks it up and will try to push her lines forward. Olivia Carapaz on the ball. Calmly plays it back. And Lipscomb continues to move up the field as they keep possession. Good ball out of the back by Logan McFadden. Well played up the line. Great one two to spring in the attacker and now we're gonna look to see what the service looks like and unfortunately it let lips come down just a little bit but a very good idea. Very good idea, good intricate play down the left hand side. Started by a good ball from Logan McFadden out of the back and good one two play down the left hand side. Kendall Wade has seemed to win uh, just about every single long ball that Jacksonville State's tried to play, play forward. She's very good in the air and is able to command that D mid spot for uh, for Lipscomb. Lipscomb look, trying to trying to get on the counter here. Ball played forward, but defended well. Good pass inside by Olivia. Kelly Byler on the ball and she switches it to the far side. And Lipscomb moving forward, looking for the for the into Tory, but unfortunately the flag is up again. Now we've seen Tori Wheeler get get behind the back line a few times here with her speed, her her anticipation to get behind the back line. And now we're going the other way with Lipscomb. Tori Wheeler slipped in again and tries to clip it to the back post and just a little bit too strong, but it's going to stay in on this near side. Well defended by Jacksonville State. And it ends in a corner kick for Lipscomb. This will be the second corner kick of the night for Lipscomb. They've been pretty dangerous on set pieces, and I'm sure they'll be dangerous again, especially with the service that they have on corner kicks. It's been... It's been um, Tori Wheeler, and she's put in. She's put. A, she's put in a good ball. Ball sent in by Wheeler. McFadden almost got on the end of it, but now Vanessa Miha is able to pick it up, and a, a good one-two by Jacksonville State, but. Lipscomb regains possession and is back on the charge moving forward. A good ball played to the top of the box, but well defended by Jacksonville State. A little bit of a tussle on the far side there. No foul was called, and we'll be moving from right to left Jacksonville's ball with throwing on the far side. Jacksonville tries to play through the middle as they keep possession. And now this ball sent long. First ball's won by Lipscomb, but then re regained. Jacksonville regains possession. Try for a long shot, but it's easily picked up by the goalkeeper at Lipscomb. Olivia Carapazzo will try to move forward in possession. Not much pressure coming from Jacksonville State high up the field. So it makes makes for pretty pretty calm night for the defenders on the ball so far for Lipscomb as they try to move forward. Errant pass from Lips Lipscomb gives Jacksonville State the throw to move forward. Um, 
And what I've I've really liked about the game so far, um, as as we've settled in, played the first 15 minutes ish or so, um, Lipscomb's really been able to take over this game in their possession. They've been able to to find them, sign them. Been called back in dangerous positions, but um, Jacksonville State has defended very very well, but. They've been under pressure pretty much all night so far. Good one-two play down on this near side by Jacksonville State. Try to play a ball inside, but very well defended by Lips. Olivia tries to play the ball down the line. And Usher out of bounds for a quick throw for Lipscomb. Good feet. Shelby Kraft tries to play initial through ball, but finds the pass out to, to Byler. Ball inside at the top of the box. Very well defended by Jacksonville State. Again, we have Lipscomb knocking at the door. They want their first goal, and they're, they're poised to get it. Slight pressure coming against Carapaza, but she's calm. She looks to play inside, but just elects to take it herself. Oh, look to play Playcraft into the middle, but there's just a little bit of confusion on who was supposed to get that ball there. But I like how Carapaza elected to come inside, dribble a little bit, and test the defense of Jacksonville State. Play there is well defended by McFadden. Ball found in the pocket, and now Lipscomb State is back on back on the offensive end. Steidel's able to spray a ball nicely out wide. If Grace Grace on the ball, she tries to play it inside, but it's cut out by the by the Jacksonville State goalkeeper. It's a good move again by Lipscomb. They try to play one twos through the middle and try to combine out wide and that was on display on this last play of Jacksonville State once again up to the task. Carapoza tries to play the ball, tries to control the ball but is dispossessed. Now Jacksonville State is moving forward. Intercepted by McFadden and found her target inside into Kraft and now we're moving forward on this right hand side. A good move down on this near side and an even better ball inside. It's a great service there and almost a better finish. Um, but just just missed on just missed just missed the frame. Very well challenged by Lipscomb. Again, Lips, Lipscomb's able to displace Jacksonville State high up the field. You got a shot on target, very well saved the first one. Oh, and the second attempt just barely goes wide. This whole move for me started with, with the defensive prowess of, of Kendall Wade. She's able to win the long ball, and then they're back on, back on the front foot. You have Byler, you have the attack of Lipscomb State, or sorry, the attack of Lipscomb that are just putting Jacksonville State under pressure. And this has been pretty much the story of the game so far. Lipscomb State knocking at the door, but Jacksonville State, Lipscomb knocking at the door, but Jacksonville State refuses to bend. Tough challenge in the middle, no call has been made. We're gonna have a throw going forward for Lipscomb. Carapazzo with the throw. She's surveying the field for her options, elects to go down the line. And again, well defended by Jacksonville State, but they are only able to clear their lines to McFadden where she's able to find a simple pass out wide. Good combination play out of the back from Lipscomb as they move forward. And again, there's space on this left-hand side to attack Jacksonville State, and they find it. 
Now there's service inside toward the back post. And a very good save. A double save here by Jacksonville State. But again, we have Lips Lips come knocking on the door. They're poised to get their first goal. I like the defense from Jacksonville State, but I just don't know how much longer they can sustain all this pressure. Good move there on the left-hand side, but even better defense to displace Lipscomb. Jacksonville State looks to move forward. They find a pass into the midfield pocket, but there's pressure right away from, from Lipscomb. It's been tough for Jacksonville State to efficiently move up the field, tough for them to find passes um, and keep possession. This game so far has been mostly Lipscomb, Lipscomb, but the defense of Jacksonville State has been up to all the challenges they've been asked. Out of bounds, Lipscomb ball. As they look to create a chance off this throw on the left-hand side. Well played into the midfield. The run of the run of Byler was on, but the pass was just a little bit too far in front of her. Jacksonville State steps their lines up as Ball will be sent long here into the midfield. Keep an eye out for number 25, Kendall Wade. Oh, it didn't even quite reach her, but she's been dominant on, in the air, winning balls in the midfield for, for Lipscomb. Jacksonville elects to play through the midfield. That's good play there. Um, they try to find the ball out wide, but it somehow trickled its way out of bounds. It's going to be Lips Lipscomb ball moving forward. Byler on the ball. She tries to she plays through the midfield, and they keep good possession. Not much in that play there, but I like the idea for Byler to come deep, try to create some possession, link with her midfielders, and. Um, spring some of her other attackers as well. Again, Kendall Wade wins the first ball, but Jacksonville State's able to pick up the second, and they're, they're on their front foot moving forward. Aggressive play, in, aggressive play on the far side by Jacksonville State, but no foul was called. We're going to have a goal kick for Lipscomb. And Jackson, Jacksonville State seems to drop their lines whenever whenever Lipscomb uh, has a has a goal kick, which allows Lipscomb the, the ability to, to pass the ball forward. We have a change here where we're going to have uh, number 11, Faith Adams, step on the field. She's she's going to play in this right mid spot on the near side. Olivia Carapuzzle move. Carapazzo moves forward and looks for the ball in the channel. And it was cut out by Jacksonville State. We also have uh, Kalia Perry stepping on the field as well. She'll, she'll look to link with uh, Kelly Byler up top and is, is, uh, is definitely a player to watch out for. Leah Perry with her first touch. Decent hold up play. Tries to play it back, but is picked off by Jacksonville State. Although Jacksonville State was able to win a throw in there, they seem to be still pinned in in their own half. Good defending by McFadden and a tough challenge. Jacksonville State picks up the ball and they try to move forward with the through ball, but Lips comes up for the task. Well defended on the far side. Very, very well defend. Very, very well defended.
Jacksonville ball on the far side. Throw in. They try to find some good options to, to create a chance. They haven't really had too much more than a half chance, and uh, that's credit to everything that Lipscomb's able to, been able to do so far. Calm defensive play by Kendall Wade. Um, her and McFadden have been have been very very good and solid in the for the back line of uh, of Lipscomb. Olivia Carapozo plays a nice intricate ball into the feet of Byler. Back out. Carapozo looks for a long diagonal switch and she's able to find her target. But once again, the flag is up offsides. If Lipscomb's able to get their timing just a, a little bit better, they're going to be able to find themselves in on goal, breakaways, 2v1s, in behind the back line of Jacksonville State. I like the ideas that they've been able to put together so far. Their timing's just been a little bit off. Jacksonville State trying to gain possession down on the far side, but Lipscomb, Lipscomb isn't having it. They move forward, and Kalia... Kalia Perry looks to get on the end of this ball, and she's able to. She tries to size up her defender to get in behind her, but unfortunately for her, it goes out for a goal kick. Kimberly McPherson comes onto the field up top for Jacksonville State. And it'll be interesting to see how the changes for both sides um, will switch up the energy of this game. If uh, uh, switch up the energy for Jacksonville State, maybe she's able to create some opportunities for them. It may switch things up. Kalia Perry on the on the opposite end for Lipscomb is able to switch up the offensive energy for Lipscomb. Maybe she can do the trick to find that first goal that Lipscomb's been Lipscomb has been looking for. Ball up the line to Kalia Perry. She elects to play a nice ball in, looking for Byler. Drops down a shot, but it's blocked by Jacksonville State. We're going to have a corner kick, Lipscomb. It's going to be the third corner kick of the night for Lipscomb. They've been dangerous on these set pieces. Looks like we're going to have Kalia Perry taking it on this near side. And and this is this has been one of the one of the best ways um, that they've created some of their chances on set pieces, especially the corner kicks, um, and they've done very very well, Lipscomb, so far on on corner kicks. Leah Perry looking to send the ball inside. Jacksonville State's defense is up to the challenge preliminarily, but long strike by Lipscomb, but done very but but held off by Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State pushes up their lines and they send the ball line, or send the ball long. McFadden with her first touch of the night, surveys the field, tries to play a through ball, but dealt with very, very well by Lipscomb. Livia plays in the pocket to Byler. Byler plays out wide and looks to overlap. Ball played four, but dealt well with by Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State displaced once again. Lipscomb tries to play forward, but it's cut out by Jacksonville State. One thing to look for with, with Lipscomb is with their pressure, they, they're able to quickly turn over Jacksonville State, pick up the ball high, and create scoring opportunities. Ball goes out on the far side. We're going to have a lips come throw in. Flicked on by Byler. And a foul called against Kalia Perry. She was trying to flick. She was trying to flick on the flick from, from Byler into the into the into the danger zone there, but it was cut out and Subsequently, a foul was called against her. Ball sent forward. Long ball sent forward by Jacksonville State, but again, won by Lipscomb, and they're back on the charge. Clea, per er, Clea Perry on the ball now. 
She looks to have a long effort and it's just high and wide. What seemed to be a common trend of this game is Jacksonville State pushes up their lines, they send a ball long, and Lipscomb's able to win it out of the air and they're charging for it again, like so. Here we have Kelly Byler. She looks to size up her defender. She's able to get past. She's looking to shoot. She hits one with her left foot and it barely skies over the bar. Kelly Byler is definitely a player to keep an eye on. She leads the ASUN Conference with 11 goals. She was a prolific goal scorer in her high school days. She's carried that into her college career and she's definitely been dangerous throughout this match so far. Errant pass out wide. Um, for a throw in, lips come, lips come throw. Olivia Carapazzo will take the throw and look forward. Kelly Byler plays it back to Olivia Carapazzo. Carapazzo, Byler. She looks upfield, but it's it's cut out. Fadden tries to hold it up, sends the ball long, which will drop Lips comes line back just ever so slightly. Um, but they'll be able to keep possession as they move up the field. And once again, Jacksonville State is, is somewhat pinned in by not only the pressure, but the, the possession that Lipscombs had been able to build throughout the game. Vanessa Mija looks for options up the field but plays her plays her pass a little bit too strong and an easy pick up for lips lips come moving up the field maintaining possession surveying options as they move forward Olivia Carapaza here on the ball she looks to charge forward and get good service in the box as she does, and Byler's almost able to get on the end of it. Again, you have Kendall Wade winning that first ball out of the air for Lipscomb. Jacksonville State's able to pick up the second, and they should. McFadden shimmies through a few defenders, finds a 1-2, gets the ball back. She had Vanessa Mija on the far side to potentially play a 1-2 to send her into the box, but she elected to go for goal, and at the in the end, she wasn't able to get enough power on it. Fadden looks to send it long. Well dealt with by Jacksonville State as they send it long once again. Checking the Bisons, number 14, Emmy Reeder. Number 16, Marcella Cash. And number 17, Lydia Hintz. And for the Gamecocks, number 2, Lauren Hutton. And number 5, Emily Davis. Some changes. We have substitutions. For, for for Lipscomb, Lips, for Lipscomb, Eve Reeder comes on the pitch, um, and she will she will slot into that defensive midfield slot there. Leah Perry looks to play a ball in a dangerous area, and she does, but again, well defended by Jacksonville State. That's a very dangerous ball she's able to play in with her left foot, screaming across the goal. All it would need was a touch for it to, for it to be turned goalward, but Jacksonville State does well with it. And here we're going to have another corner kick for, for Lipscomb. Kalia Perry will take it once again. This is going to be the fourth corner kick of the night. 
And again, a common trend, common theme of this game, Lipscomb's service in the box has been very dangerous. And they've been knocking on the door since about the third minute here. Plays the ball into a dangerous area, able to get on the end of it, and that's a goal! Emanuela Skirt, she's able to... Able to and after a few touches on the back post, but that's just great awareness by Skirch to find a good space, anticipate where the ball is going to go, get her head on the end of it, and find the first goal of the night. Lipscomb's been knocking, knocking on the door from about the first five, ten minutes of the match, and they're rewarded for their efforts. They've been persistent. They played good football. They passed the ball up the pitch. They've put in danger service throughout this match, um, and they're rewarded. Foul called, and we're going to be moving, moving in the direction of of Lipscomb. They've been able to keep possession, essentially dominate this game so far, um, and they're up 1-0 as a result. It's about six minutes left in the half, and Lipscomb will be looking for another goal for sure. Jacksonville State will be doing all they can to 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 fend them off. Ball played up this near side and then played out of bounds by Jacksonville State. Libby Carapazzo will take the throw. And it's cut out by Jacksonville State. Cleo, Cleo Perry was able to get the initial touch on the throw by Carapazzo, but then warded off well by number nine of Jacksonville State. But Jacksonville State's having a difficult time clearing their lines. They're able to just kind of play these balls outside, which keeps them under pressure. And Lipscomb's been, done a very, very good job to move up the field via throw-ins, um, via good via, via Now they find another throw-in down on the far side. McPherson plays the ball back for another long ball picked off by Lipscomb. Olivia Carapazza tries to get in there, plays a calm pass back. Lipscomb keeps possession in a dangerous area as they charge forward. Very good pass into the box. Well defended by Jacksonville State. Second effort by Lipscomb. Jacksonville, Jacksonville State's able to clear their lines. Fierson tries to play the ball up the line, but a little bit too strong. They always say the last five minutes and the first five minutes of each half are always the most important important periods of the match. Um, with that being said, Lipscomb's going to be poised to take as much advantage as they can with these last five minutes to try to get another goal um, in the back of the net. And Jacksonville is going to be able to try to, or they're going to try to turn turn their fortune, their misfortune into good fortune in these last five minutes. Again, Kendall Wheeler is able to win the first ball, starts the attack for Lipscomb. Kalia is able to play a ball across, but it's a little high um, and goes out of bounds for Jacksonville State uh, goal kick. Again, Jacksonville State elects to play long out of the back, but picked off in the end by Lipscomb. Lipscomb has the options as they attack forward. Looking to find service into the box. Good service into a dangerous area de dealt well with by Jacksonville State. Another ball played to the back post. Kalia Perry almost gets on to the end of it. Ball dug out of the corner by Lipscomb. Played into the box but dealt well with by Jacksonville State. Three minutes and some change left here in the first half. And we have Lips Lipscomb, who's been dominating the game. Jacksonville State, they've been defending um, in a very tenacious nature, been able to, to keep it to 1-0. But Lipscomb has had many opportunities to make it 1, 2, 3, maybe even 4.
Great play down here by this near side. It's in and dealt well with by the goalkeeper on the initial ball, but once again, the flag is up offsides. It's a collision there in the box that looked a little bit nasty, but everybody seems to be okay. Bailey Dean, the goalkeeper for Jacksonville State, she had her hands on her knees there for a little bit, trying to collect herself. She's a freshman that has played the majority of the games in the pipes, for, between the pipes for, for Jacksonville State and has had a very, very good season so far. Jacksonville State plays it long into the corner. Seems as though Logan McFadden will pick it up, tries to play it up the line, but regains possession. Plays it back to the goalkeeper. We find some pretty good confidence and possession to, pretty good confidence for Lipscomb to play out of the back. And good solid, solid possession like this is a good way to kill off the half as well for Lipscomb. They're confident on the ball, they move the ball. Um, intricately between their back line, their midfielders, they spring forward, their their wide players uh, efficiently as well. But looks like they're just going to pass the ball side to side here. These last couple of seconds of the first half. Stand corrected. They look to go for it. They're going to goal and slipped in on the far side. A cross that goes into the far side and. Just a little bit too strong in front. In f just a little bit too strong in front there, Faith Adams. She tried to get on the end of it, but unfortunately for her, it, it skipped past her. Again, Jacksonville State pushes their lines up and elects to send the ball long here. And again, Kendall Wade steps into the midfield and wins the ball out of the air. One minute remaining in the half where we see Lips Lipscomb, the home team, dominating the game so far. It's been tough for Jacksonville State to, to find possession high up the field, find chances. A lot of their chances have been half chances. Um, shots shots from distance that haven't troubled the net of, of Lipscomb whatsoever. Olivia Carapaza once again picks up the ball. Finds a good pass forward, and it's gonna ha it's gonna be Lipscomb throwing moving forward on this near side. Foul called here with the last two seconds. Long pass sent forward, but that will conclude the first half with. Lipscomb University up 1-0 and against the Jacksonville State Gamecocks.
And we're back live at Lipscomb Soccer, Lipscomb Scott Soccer Complex to start the second half. We're kicking off the second half with a score line of 1-0 in favor of the home team. Um, and we are getting ready to start. First half, first half illustrated some good football, um, especially on in favor of, of Lipscomb. They were able to create a lot of good chances and They'll be poised to do it again in the second half, and Jacksonville State um, kicks off the play for us. Kalia Perry tries to work her way down this near side. Skirts past the first defender, skirts past the second. Tries to get it on her favorite left foot. Effort on goal, but not quite strong enough. It's a very good start for Lipscomb. They were able to dis dispossess Jacksonville State here on this near side and create an early chance. Olivia Carapoza is able to calm the ball out of the air. Good footwork to be able to, to calm the play down and start the attack for, for Lipscomb. Very, very good footwork on the far side to wiggle free ball sent in oh and unfortunate for Lipscomb they weren't able to to get the strike that they wanted on that ball into the into the box there just in, just top of the six yard box but a, again a strong start for Lipscomb David Carapoza sizes things up from deep, sends it in toward the ball, toward the goal, and a good save by Jacksonville State. This is going to be the first corner kick of the half for for Lipscomb, the fifth of the game. They've been very dangerous on set pieces, especially their corner kicks. So this is. This is a situation that Jacksonville State is going to be very, very focused to try to ward off the attack of Lipscomb. Good ball sent in there by Kalia Perry to the back post, kept alive by Lipscomb. Sent to goalward, but defended uh, very, very well by Jacksonville State. What we saw throughout the first half when Jacksonville State either had possession um, via their goalkeeper or uh, goal kicks, they would push their lines forward, send a long ball, and Lipscomb would, would win possession. That was how the game kind of went in the first half. Lipscomb was able to pick up a lot of those long balls and start their attack even from their defensive third. Um, and that trend is, has seemed to pick up where it left off. Clea Perry picks up some space on this near side here. She sizes up her first defender. Is able to skip past her, looking for options in the box. Sends it in. Looked like a potential handball, but yep. And the handball is called here on this near side, left side of the 18-yard box. Clea Perry was able to get down, get down this left-hand side, send a ball in, in toward the 18-yard box, and it just went off the, the hand of the defender of Jacksonville State. This is going to be a very dangerous area for, Je for, for Lipscomb to have a set piece. Service coming in here from Olivia Carapaza, who has the ability to go direct on goal or try to look for her teammates with dangerous service in toward that, that second six area. Keep an eye out for number five, Kelly Kelly Byler, keep an eye out for Kalia Perry. Ball comes into the far post, just a little bit too strong, but kept alive by Lipscomb. Jacksonville State does well to ward off the pressure for the moment, but Lipscomb has a throw in deep in their territory on the far side. Long throw into the box, the flick unsuccessful by Lipscomb. Second ball picked up by Kelly Butler is sent in and an 
unfortunately goes far left of the goal, but kept alive by Clea Perry. She sizes up her defender, looks to get on her favorite left foot, cuts again, tries to play it low and hard across the face of the goal, deflected out of bounds for, for, for a corner kick. Lipscomb has pinned in Jackson State for Jacksonville State, excuse me, for pretty much the majority of the first half and have picked up where they left off. This is their second corner kick of the half, second corner kick of the half. They're sixth, I believe, and throughout the course of the game. These first five minutes have been all all Lipscomb. Olivia Carapoza looking to send the ball into a dangerous area, which she's done all game. Finds the near post. The ball headed off the near post by Jacksonville State. Service by Olivia Carapaza just seems to go a little bit high and over the goal. That's only the first corner kick where they haven't found um, the area of the 18-yard box they've been looking for. The service has been excellent tonight so far. Again, Jacksonville State elects to go long. Lipscomb wins the first one, and they're back on the attack. Carapoza plays the ball in, through ball, just a little bit too strong. Just ever so strong for Tori Wheeler running in. Tori Wheeler's been dangerous, playing off the line of the defense pretty much all night. She was called offsides a few times in the first half, but she's her timing has seemed to get a little bit better in this first half. She held her run. But the ball from Olivia, uh, uh, Kalia Perry was just a little bit too strong for her to get on the end of. Good ball into the pocket where you have Kelly Byler coming off the coming off the edge, and then she looks to slip in. Wheeler, but well defended. Seems to be something that I'm saying a lot tonight. Well defended by Jacksonville State. Well defended by Jacksonville State because it's true. They've defended off some excellent attacking attempts by, by Lipscomb. Lipscomb has a lot of attacking options, a lot of players with, with different skill sets that can pose different threats to a back line or a back six even, if you will. And Jacksonville State, you have to give them a lot of credit because they've been organized defensively and have done well for the most part. Oh, an unfortunate slip there by Olivia Carapaza, which offers the opportunity for Jacksonville State to spring forward. They have options moving forward. A shot from the top of the box, but in the end, an easy save for Lipscomb. CJ Graham picks that one up, a shot right at her. Um, she's, been, she's been awesome all season long. Led the country in saves last year um, and is just a very, very good player, definitely. Um, a player that builds confidence from the back for, for the whole, whole Lips, Lipscomb squad. Clea Perry sprung out wide. She looks to size up her defender once again. Defender once again. She does get past her. Tries to play it back to Kelly Byler. She finds her. Kelly Byler clips it to the back post. Tries to find an attacking option. The second ball is picked up. Lipscomb still posing pressure and attempt after attempt. Logan McFadden does very well to step into the midfield, win the ball back for Lipscomb. An unfortunate pass, finds Jacksonville State back on the ball, but they're able to, to win it again. Here the ball goes out for a throw-in signaled for Lipscomb. Cleo Perry flicks it on the inside. 
Shot toward the far post, goes off the Jacksonville defender. Goes off, goes off the Jacksonville defender's head or face area. She needs to take a knee and the trainer or a member of the medical staff is coming out to check her out. That was a very close range shot to the head that she took there. And that was Brianna Eads, number nine, um, the senior defender who's been absolutely excellent for Jacksonville State all season. She's played every single minute of the campaign so far. So to have her have to step out is going to be a big loss, looks like momentarily, for Jacksonville State. Um, but she's standing over on the sideline. It looks like she's, she's ready to check back in. It's fortunate to see because those head injuries are something that, that will scare anybody um, if you take a shot to the head, especially, especially close range. Drop ball, Clea Perry has possession. She sends it into the box and finished. That is just an absolutely great play by, Lips by Lipscomb. Ball into the box, low and hard, driven across the face of the ball by Clea Perry and finished. It's an absolutely great, great goal. That was Grace Oliver who was able to finish that one. She she almost slid for it and was able to just get on the, get on the end of it. Clea Perry was able to play a very very dangerous ball across the face of the goal. That's very very difficult for for any defense to to defend and keep track of. Those hard and low passes across the face of the goal, extremely difficult to defend. Um, and you have to give Lipscomb credit for for the way that they've been able to just attack the 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 defense of Jacksonville State pretty much all night. Now as we've, we've settled into the first 10 minutes of the second half here, Lipscomb has been able to pick up where they left off in the first half. They've been able to keep Jacksonville State pinned in, keep possession um, pretty much throughout the, throughout the pitch, whether it's in their defensive third, throughout the middle third, or even in their attacking third. They have options as they look to move up the field. They've been able to get good service in from wide areas, and they've been rewarded. Second goal came in from Kalia Perry, finding, in, finding good service low and hard across the face of the goal, um, which, which led to, to a great finish. Again, Kalia Perry will get on the end of this one. She pl plays a very, very good ball down the line. Clipped into the box. Jacksonville State gets the first touch on it. Lipscomb gets second touch. And Jacksonville State eventually clears their lines. But once again, Lipscomb is able to pick up the first ball and keep Jacksonville State pinned in. Olivia Carapazzo is able to find Wheeler. Wheeler shots blocked, bounces to... Perry, Perry sends another ball hard and low shot, goal, Lipscomb. That is an absolutely fantastic finish by number two, Shelby Kraft. That is a great finish, top corner. And Kalea Perry picks up her second assist on the night. Again, service hard and low across the box, extremely difficult for any defense to defend. And now we see the defense of Jacksonville State seeming to really get tired, unable to pick up some of these balls low and hard played across the box that they were able to get on the end of and, and ward off in the first half. Second half seems fatigue is setting in and the, the attacking prowess of Lipscomb is on display here. Ball sent in over the top but picked up easy by C.J. Graham. C.J. Graham elects to roll it out to Kendall Wade. She said Kendall Wade's name a lot in the first half because she was winning a lot of the balls out of the air. She hasn't had, she hasn't been called to do that all that much in the second half, but still a player that um, has had a very, very good game so far, in my opinion.
as Lipscomb moves forward on the far and far side. Again, they, they're poised in possession. Carapaza looks forward, is able to find a ball in the pocket. And they move forward again via via Kelly Baylor. But her her pass is cut off. And Jacksonville State looks to make a move forward, but once again defended off well um, by Lipscomb. Foul called on Lipscomb. It's going to be Jacksonville ball around midfield. Free kick. Jacks Jacksonville State will be able to move their lines forward. And they've elected to, to just play a lot of these balls forward. Long, long balls into Lipscomb's defensive one-third. But what Lipscomb's been able to do is win the first one um, and then start their attack going the other direction. Carapaza drives forward on the far side. Looks to play Byler, but it's cut out. Byler presses well and wins her team a throw-in on the far side. Quick throw-in. And Carapaza calmly dribbles toward the middle, finds a ball into the pocket, but it's, it's subsequently cut out by Jacksonville State. Again, a long ball over the top that Logan McFadden deals with very, very easily. Kendall Wade does, does very, very well to find her center back partner on the, on the other side. They seem to switch, switch in that play, but it paid dividends. Kalia Perry sprung forward. She looks to play the ball forward, and in the end, the ball is just played over the top. Checking for the Bisons, number nine, Manuela Schur. Number 11, Faye Maddox. Number 13, Bailey Oatinger. Number 14, Eddie Reed. Number 16, Marcella Cash. Number 17, Olivia Hayes. Number 23, With the scoreline at 3-0, it seems that Lipscomb is electing to, to make, make a number of changes, maybe give some of their players some rest. Um, and you have to say that makes a whole lot of sense because in this in this second half already in the first 15 minutes they've showed their dominance um, they've seemed to make they've seemed to be able to create a score line that that is going to be extremely difficult for Jacksonville State to to come back from so it makes sense to to get get more players in there um, switch things up a little bit maybe rest some of your some of some of the players who started the first half and even started the game in general and and kind of work work through your depth here. Very, very good one-two play to enter the 18-yard box, but the the flag is up on the far side for offsides. Lips, Lips, Lipscomb has been called offsides a number of times tonight, but I, I really like how they've been towing the line of offsides, trying to create as many opportunities as possible. Everything that they've been doing in these plays where they've been called offsides makes a whole lot of sense. They're trying to trying to do the right things and trying to get in in behind the back line of Jacksonville State. It's paid off three times, but for me, they they've created enough op opportunities for them to have more goals tonight, and I think that they're they're going to have more opportunities as they as this game progresses. Ball played into the pocket at the top of the box. Shot and a goal! Absolutely beautiful strike by number 16, Marcella Cash. And that shot is Cash in the back of the net. Far post. That is an amazing shot as she turned the defense, sized them up, and hit a laser to the far post. That makes the scoreline 4-0 in an in amazing fashion. That's just a beautiful goal. And again, Lipscomb... Lipscomb's attacking prowess is on display here. Been a tough night for Jacksonville State, but um, you can't take anything away from Marcella Cash on that goal. That's that's about as beautiful as a goal as we're going to see. And 
and now as as the home team goes up four to nothing, um, and the game game will settle here, it's going to be interesting to see how both teams manage the rest of the minutes in this game. I would like to see Lips, Lips come to continue to stay on the front foot, continue to attack just like this, because these types of performances they build confidence, especially on senior night. Most, uh, most, most, if not all of the seniors have a lot of their family members here, their loved ones in the crowd. Um, and it's, again, it, like I said, it, these types of performances, they, they build confidence. And at this point in the season, last, last regular season A-Sun matchup for both teams, Lipscomb University, they're, they're preparing themselves for the conference, conference tournament. If they win this match, which it looks like that's uh, probable to happen, they have the ability to host a conference playoff game. Again, Marcella Cash goes on goal, but is fended off by Jacksonville State. Madden plays it over to Kendall Wade as she surveys the field and moves forward. Back to her center back partner, McFadden. She likes to play in the pocket. A good turn. Skirch is fouled. I like that play in the midfield by Skirch. She's able to pick up the ball off McFadden's feet, shimmies a little bit, turns, picks up a foul for her team. Lipscomb moves their lines forward. Again, Lipscomb's been very dangerous on set pieces. Um, they have options to, to send it to where the majority of their players are on the left-hand side, or maybe they play it cash on the left, but McFadden elects to push everybody to the far side. Plays it directly on goal and picked up by Jacksonville State. Again, long ball played by played by Jacksonville State. Initial ball won by Lipscomb. Um, Jacksonville State able to pick up a foul and and the attacking third of the the attacking third they have a set piece that can push the lines back of Lipscomb I'm interested to see if if they elect to go direct on goal here from about 35 yards out or if they try to try to play service into the far post here, what they what they elect to do. They could play short, um, but it'll be interesting to see how they put Lipscomb under pressure. Play a good ball in to, to around the PK spot, but picked up by C.J. Graham with no problem. Ball intercepted in the midfield by Jacksonville State, but possession give, given right back to Lipscomb. Wheeler elects to play long into Cash, a little bit too strong. But Lipscomb's able to pick up possession on the far side, but um, an errant dribble or pass there goes out of bounds, and it'll be Jackson State throwing. Jacksonville State, excuse me. Again, Jacksonville State elects to go long. Logan McFadden picks up the first one. And a good challenge in the midfield by Lipscomb. Long ball by McFadden, picked up by Jacksonville State.
good attack here on the far side by Jacksonville State. They're able to win their first corner of the game. Again, this is the first corner kick of the night by the Gamecocks. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Lipscomb defends this set piece. Ball played into the near post, um, but one that's a little bit difficult and a little bit awkward to get on the end of, which results into a, uh, which results to a goal kick for for Lipscomb. Jacksonville State has dropped their lines pretty much any time Lipscomb has a goal kick, um, and that allows ja uh, Lipscomb to be able to just kind of roll roll their passes forward, build up the field in, in good possession, and that's kind of been their strong suit. Their possession throughout throughout the game has kept Jacksonville Jacksonville State pinned back. Very good little turn there by Manuela Skirt. She's able to find find a pass and they looked for a switch but cut out by Jacksonville State. You got Jacksonville State driving forward but in the end very very well defended by Logan McFadden. For me that's been the best move of the best move of the night for Jacksonville State. But in the end very very well um Defended by by Lipscomb. Hold up play by Cash. Ball over the top. Cut out. Good footwork in the middle here by Jacksonville State as they look to push their lines up and attack out here on this left-hand side. Ball over the top. Defended by, by Lipscomb. And at the end of the day, a foul for Lipscomb. As... As this game has settled and now we have 20 minutes left in the second half, it seems as though um, Jacksonville State has been able to pick up a little bit more of the rhythm of the game. They've been able to pick up some possession. They've been able to dribble out of the midfield and create a few dangerous opportunities in these last two minutes. And, and that's something that's good to see. Very, 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 very good diagonal ball out of the back by, by McFadden to, to jumpstart the the attack for Lipscomb. Cash goes one-on-one, -on -one, gets in the box, shimmies. She's corner of the box. She hits low, tries to tries to cut cut the shot back toward the near post, low and hard. Very, very good idea by Manuela Cash. Defended, defended decently well um, by, by Jacksonville State, and in the end, a very, very good save. Corner for Lipscomb, played to the far side of the 18-yard box. A great little turn, ball across the face, touched by the goalkeeper and played out, played out of the box. But Jacksonville State having trouble clearing their lines. Lipscomb is swarming them. Another ball played in toward the back, toward the back post, picked up by by Lipscomb. Very good offensive pressure by Lipscomb overall. Jacksonville State's able to clear their lines and they're on the charge. In the end, a lot of these long passes that Jacksonville State is trying to play these diagonal balls into the channels off the shoulders of uh, McFadden. They, they haven't been able to get, get on the end of because McFadden's pace and her anticipation is something that is definitely a strong suit for Lipscomb. Um, and Jacksonville hasn't, hasn't, hasn't been able to get, get in behind her um, or just the back line of uh, Lipscomb in general. What I'd like to see is the way that, that Lipscomb tries to move up the field. They try to move up the field by, via intricate passing. Um, they try to find, if the center backs are on the ball, they try to find their outside backs and connect via triangles through the midfield. 
and then ultimately move up move up the field um, by finding their forwards either in the pocket or down the flanks. It's it's a uh, it's very good soccer they they've been playing tonight. Good hold up play by Cash. And Lipscomb is on the charge again. Cash is open on the right-hand side. She slipped in. It looks like she may get there. She does get there, plays a good cutback ball toward the six-yard box, but defended um, well again by Jacksonville State. Ball comes back in for Lipscomb. Jacksonville State tries to clear their lines with possession, and they do so very, very well. Good one-on-one -on -one defending. Very, very good one-on-one -on -one defending by Eve Reeder while she's fouled. And it looks like we are going to have a card here. Yes, we do have a card here to Cynthia Bogosi. She goes into the book for, for a late challenge there. A little bit of unnecessary kick out or tussle, if you will. Um, you could see some frustrations probably setting in for Bogosi and the rest of Jacksonville State because they've been They've had their backs up against the wall for pretty much the entire match, and sometimes tempers flare. That's how that's how it goes in football, but nothing too dirty, nothing too malicious. Kendall Wade sends it in, and it's finished. It's goal number five for Lipscomb. The home team is absolutely running away with this one, and I'm mistaken. Wade is the one who is on the end of the service and scores the goal. And you can see what it means to her as she sprints down the sideline, gives handshakes, daps up everybody on the sideline, coaches, teammates included. You just love to see the energy, and it's, it's great to see. The home team, they're running away with this one. They're ending their A-Sun campaign in this conference on the right foot. And on the right note, 5 nil in the favor of Lipscomb University, the home team. talked about it earlier in the second half when I believe Lipscomb went up 3-0, three, three how, how this game was going to be managed. was What you always look for in games like this is if a team that is, is up by two or three or four goals, if they kind of take their foot off the pedal, um, which will allow the other team to, to get back into the game. And you can't say that, that, that Lipscomb has done that. They've They've kept their foot on full throttle. They've they've looked to attack. They've looked to continue to play good football throughout this match. And only with about with 16 minutes left in the match, they're up 5-0 and they're rewarded for all their efforts. This game has seemed to open up a little bit, where Jacksonville State has been able to get. A little bit more possession in their attacking third. Some of their midfielders have been able to pick up the ball, um, dribble at um, the back line of Lipscomb State or of Lipscomb, excuse me. Um, but Lipscomb's been up for every single challenge. They've they've been good in in their initial one v one defending. If they if they've um, you know lost out on a challenge, Jacksonville State's been able to dribble past the first defender. The second defender for Lipscomb is right there to to clean everything up. Foul called on the called on Lipscomb. Going to be Jacksonville ball. Good service toward the toward the corner of the 18 on the far side. Ball almost rolls out, but still in. The ball is still in play on that far, uh, on the near side here. Ball sent up long, but Lipscomb's not able to clear their lines efficiently.
at the moment, Jacksonville State has lips has lips come pinned in, and they're they're they've just won a set piece on this near side here, and you'd like to think that they'll be able to put in some dangerous service into the into the 18 yard box. They'll be looking for that second six PK area to try to turn the back line of Lipscomb, um, which creates a dangerous situation for any defense to deal with. Ball played right into that space, but CJ Graham able to come out, command her box and, and, and grab the ball out of the air there. That's always something that you love to see. Um, especially when you're defending those danger set pieces, your goalkeeper able to come out, come off her line, command her box, pick those balls out of the air. Cause it's it's very difficult to try to win those those headers when the ball or when the balls are played in at that height. It's very very good goalkeeping. Ball played up the line, a good effort by by Cash. She tried to tried to turn her defender. Jacksonville State was up for it. Skirch was able to play play some good intricate combination play with Cash. Oh, and unfortunately, Lipscomb is offsides on that far side there. What I've liked from Skirch as she's come onto the pitch is her ability to to turn. When her back is to goal, she's able to fake out her defenders, turn, and which subsequently allows Lips to come to 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 play forward. Where when a lot of other midfielders, when their back is to goal, a lot of the times they either play backwards or sideways. She has the ability to turn and and jumpstart the attack for Lips coming. It's been it's been great to see. Good turn by Cash. She tries to def she tries to get past the second defender, but is unsuccessful in the dribble there. patient build up by Lipscomb something we we've, we've seen seen all night here um, without without much pressure from Jacksonville State and their defensive third you see Lipscomb able to to keep possession as they as they build from the goalkeeper and and on up the field Foul there, one by Bogosi. And for me, this is this is better play by Jacksonville State. Instead of electing to always launch the ball long, they're looking to build out of the out of the out of the back and through the midfield, and it's it's paid off for them. Good ball played into the box, flicked on, but just wide of the goal. You would like to see Jacksonville State do a little bit more of that. Find find little passes through the midfield where they can, you know, create numerical advantages either through the midfield or and on into their attacking third, which will, you know, subsequently allow them to get more chances on goal, maybe win more fouls um, through the middle of the pitch, instead of electing to just to just hit the ball long. So I like to see that from Jacksonville State. It's something that it's an aspect of the game that Lipscomb was able to pick up from, from minute one. Tough challenge there, but no foul was called. Good feet there by A by Ashley, but the ball ball goes out of bounds. It's a good idea. Ball cleared up this near side and subsequently goes out of bounds. It'll be Jacksonville 
State throw. Good feet again there by Ashley Watuki. She's able to wiggle out, find a pass. And a good idea to switch, switch play, but Jacksonville defender was there for it. Skirts again showing her ability to to be crafty on the ball. She was in the end dispossessed, but I like her confidence on the ball a lot. Good idea for a through ball. In the end, Lipscomb picks it up with options on the far uh, yeah, with options on the far side. The cross is blocked, but Cash is there. And in the end, nothing comes out of it. Time is stopped by the referee. Um, it looks like we have an injury, injury sub here for Jacksonville State. We have Allie Thomas who's who's leaving the pitch. It looks like she's she's limping off. She she caught a knock or something of the sort of the sort. Lauren Hooten is going to be subbing in number two. She'll she'll pick up that midfield spot in the middle of the park there. It's going to be a drop ball to start to get things back on underway. These last eight minutes of the half. Uh, the score line is 5-0. Home, home team Lipscomb University is, is up. Um, and they've obviously been, been, been dominant on the score sheet, but they've been dominant throughout the run of play as well. Now we have three subs coming in for for Lipscomb. Basically a line change line change for their for their front three attacking players and they bring in their more star studded attack. Another thing for me that's been great to see from from Lipscomb is you have multiple players playing playing in different positions even throughout the match. You have uh, Carapaza who's shifted over to this left hand side, um, you know, and that when whenever you have players that can play multiple positions, it, it makes you more more unpredictable. It makes it difficult for the opposition to defend you and figure out what you're trying to do, the schemes you're trying to run, etc. And and Lipscomb has posed so many problems for, for Jacksonville State all night that it's just been very, very difficult for Jacksonville to, to really figure Lipscomb out. Jacksonville State's dispossessed in the midfield. Foul called. Advantage could have been let go. The ref elected to, to call the foul, bring it back. Lipscomb will have a free kick just, just at the top of their uh, defensive half. With just over five minutes left in the game, um, you have Kalia Perry, you have Kelly Byler, who have who's, who came who have come back into the game, and their ability to create chances, score goals, is something that we could see on display here again with only with only five minutes left in this match.
good feed again in the midfield, which allows Lipscomb to keep possession. Long ball, looking for Beeler. But picked up, picked up by Jacksonville State goalkeeper. Ball here sent up long where Jacksonville State was able to get on the end of it, but soft sides call. The flag raised on this near hand on this near side, which which gives Lips Lipscomb the ball back. They'll push their lines forward and potentially send this ball long, which they do. Clea Perry will get on the end of this one. Looks to use her speed to turn the corner. She's able to do successfully. She cuts back in, and now she's going back down the line. Sends a ball toward the back post that just ever so slightly goes out of bounds. Kalia Perry has posed a lot of problems for Jacksonville State. She's been able to 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 pick up a lot of a lot of these 50-50 balls um, and turn them into good possession. She's been able to size up her defenders, um, go at them, dribble them one v one, and as a result, she has two assists on the night. Time has stopped again. It looks like we have a, another player down on the far side for Jacksonville State. Looks like Lancaster is going to come in the game as an injury sub for for Davis. Um, looks like Davis took a caught a knock, which is unfortunate to see. This seems to be this the second time uh, Jacksonville State player has gone down, and um, you know, hopefully, hopefully it's not too bad. Hopefully it's just a, a knock. Lipscomb elects to keep possession in these final in the final two minutes here in the back line. Carapaz is able to find a pass inside. Good calm possession by Lipscomb, but picked off by Jacksonville State. And a foul um, by Bogosi on Skirch. Again, Lipscomb's going to look to keep possession here in these in the last minute and a half about of this game. Um, they played a very, very professional game uh, throughout throughout the entire match. They've been good in possession. They've been good in front of goal. They've created chances essentially all night. They've been confident on the ball. Um, you know, the score line is it's five zero. They've been respectful to their teammates. Uh, to their to their opponents, sorry, um, it's been a it's been an amazing performance from from Lipscomb. The home team has really given their their home fans something to be proud about on Senior Night. Carapaza is there and sends it low and hard, just wide of the goal. Again, you see uh, Kalia Perry's ability to to get on some of these, uh, you know, 
long long passes that don't necessarily look like they have an intended target, but she's able to get on the end of them and create something out of it, out of essentially nothing. It's always very very helpful when you have players that can that can do that. Carapaza is a defender who's able to get forward, um, you know, and get get on the end of Kalia, Kalia Perry's effort there. Jacksonville State looks to charge forward um, in the final minute of this game, and they win themselves a a corner kick. Looks like we're going to finish this one out with a Gamecock corner kick. They pretty much throw everybody forward. Ball to the near post and CJ Graham once again commands her box. Gets on the end of it and that will do. Lipscomb able to win this game with a scoreline of 5-0 on senior night. Congratulations to the entire Lipscomb Lipscomb women's program for ending the regular season in such a uh, such a great fashion, and congratulations to all the seniors on senior night. Once again, my name is Jaleel Nibaba. I thank you guys for joining me on YouTube, and everybody have a